Yesterday we uh, we kept working on this uh, gauge invariant uh, combination fields. Okay, uh, we uh, we said that the, uh, probably the the most useful most uh, useful thing uh, about this gauge invariant combination is then when one studies uh, one theory in one th in one gauge one can know information of uh, fields in any other gauge by using these gauge invariant combinations. Uh, then we, exp uh, we said, OK, so now let's see what is this, this Lagrangian and say the Lagrangian will be a, a function of, uh, of uh, this parameter epsilon, which uh, uh, determines uh, which is in front of each uh, perturbation variable. So I can expand uh, this Lagrangian in, in epsilon. We found that the, uh, the order 0 Lagrangian was just the, the Lagrangian when we um, evaluate it on the background. The order 1 Lagrangian was linear in the perturbations. And by integration by parts, this, uh, this were leading to the equations of motion of the background. And then uh, the term where we are actually interested in is actually the second order. Uh, so the Lagrangian expanded uh, 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 up to second order in epsilon. Okay. And yesterday we started saying, okay, which terms uh, will be there in in in, uh, in the action, uh, in the action that we care about? And we saw that we may have uh, terms like uh, the one written there actually. And we also saw that, uh, uh, we saw explicitly that uh, any, any, at the quadratic order, any vector will couple with uh, uh, vector modes in a way that after integrating by parts, that term will disappear. Okay? And the same thing was happening uh, when, when, uh, when, for example, we were, we were considering, so if, for example, if I define this quantity, which is not necessarily 0 because i is different from j, and i sum with a tensor mode, again, by doing integration by parts, this, this term will disappear. So scalar modes, vector modes, and, uh, uh, ve and uh, tensor modes uh, have no coupling at the quadratic order. OK? All right. So this is what we, uh, we are right to say yesterday. Uh, today. What I want to do is the following. So first, I, uh, I, will, mm -hmm. I will deal with some integration by parts. Okay? I want to, to study how to use integration by parts for, a, for the quadratic Lagrangian. Um, then, I want to uh, I want to answer one of the questions that one of the students asked me yesterday. And unfortunately, the student uh, is not here at the moment, <laughs> actually. So uh, once we have all these fields, how do we, how do we, how do we deal with, with all these fields, actually? OK? So I will give you some simple uh, examples. I give you these simple examples because those examples will come uh, when we, we will study this, uh, the maple code. So after this exam, ah, no, you're here, actually. OK, so exactly, I, I, I want to I try to, to reply to your question. I mean, once I have all these fields, how do I manage them? OK. Then, uh, then uh, we will see, we will see this, uh, the code. And after the code, maybe tomorrow, I don't know, and uh, the after the code, depending, after the code, I want to talk about uh, the instabilities that we may have into, into our game, OK? Which means ghosts uh, and other kinds of instabilities. 
Okay, so let's start first then, as I said, with uh, dealing with integration by parts. So once more, L will be L, uh, L0 plus L1 plus L2. Now L1, this one is uh, L when epsilon, if evaluated for uh, epsilon, maybe I should put epsilon, epsilon squared. So this will be DL, DL over the epsilon when epsilon equal to zero, and this will be one half when epsilon equal to zero. Okay? So we will uh, deal now with L2 today. So as I said, L2 uh, may have a term like this one. In L2, we may find this kind of terms. Now, when I say H1, then because this is quadratic in the perturbation, this will be automatically only a function of time. Okay? So any HI function that you will see will be purely time dependent. Okay? And if you see some other letters, A, F, G, as long as they are not the number, the, the name of the fields, they will be functions of the background. But let's see, let's see the first, let's see the first, oh, I didn't say, so before, but before the, the code, before seeing the code, I also have to explain uh, some very important point which will help us simplify as much as possible the code itself, okay? So that's a very important point that I had, I had to discuss also. But I don't know, well, let's see, let's see, let's see what we can do. All right, so now this term here, uh, we cannot do anything about it, right? Because this is alpha squared, there is no derivative. But we take it and we keep it. Uh, now let's consider instead a term like the following. A term like uh, this one. Suppose that I have uh, H2 alpha, alpha dot, okay? Now, remember that here when I say alpha, alpha is function of tx, y, z, no? So then with this dot, I mean a partial derivative with respect to time. Now, uh, but this one can, is actually equivalent to the following thing, times 1 half d of dt alpha squared. Okay? Because if you do the derivative, you get a 2 alpha, alpha dot. Exactly the same. Notice this comes because it's a, it's a quadratic action, actually. And this one I can do integration by parts because this is a Lagrangian. So this one will be just h2 dot divided by 2 alpha square. So when I see that term there, then automatically the term can be combined with this one. Yes, you're right. Very good. Minus. So you, it, will, it will be, it will be. This minus ca uh, sign comes very good because I did integration by parts. Okay. So then, then this one will go like h1 minus h2 dot uh, divided by two alpha square. Okay. So notice that that term seems seems to be. So this term here, that I asked you uh, some time ago whether a, a field like this would be a Lagrange multiplier or not, because we have a time derivative. It looks like it's not a Lagrange multiplier because I have some time derivative. But actually, up to the total derivative, it doesn't have a, any, 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 any more in time derivative. So any time that a field comes with alpha, alpha dot, or alpha squared only terms, it can be reduced to, to a term which is not dependent on derivatives of time. Okay? Now let me consider now, let me consider now another simple case, alpha dot chi. Yeah, okay. 
Now, again, this one, this one is very simple because now we don't have even to do this kind of little trick here. This one, just by integration by parts, this will be minus h3 chi dot times alpha. And again, alpha, I can remove time derivatives from alpha. OK? See, the point here, why do I want to do this? Because if there are Lagrange multipliers, I want to use them. The more Lagrange multipliers I have, the better it will be. OK? If my theory has only Lagrange multipliers, then my theory has no propagating scalar modes. Because this means that I can get rid of all of them. Once I have a Lagrange multiplier, I can get, I can get rid of it. OK? OK, so uh, let me consider another case. This one. Now, this one is, uh, OK. This seems like the kinetic term for like in, in classical mechanics we usually have. Now this one, uh, what can we do about it? Well, this one, in principle, we, we could uh, integrate by parts, right? So this one, we could, we could write it as phi dot, phi dot, and this is equal to minus phi times h4 phi dot dot. I took one of them, and I do this one. But the point is here, uh, this one will give me phi double dot. So I really don't get anything. So, I, uh, so actually, I will try as much as possible to keep my derivatives in the Lagrangian up to order 1, OK? To go as much as possible close to what we do in classical mechanics. Then you understand that if you, if you have a term like this, again, you cannot do anything about it. You have to keep it. OK? Usually, we will not have this one. OK? And when we talk about ghosts, I will make an example out of this. OK? A very simple example. Now, let me see. Oh, OK, so but, but we may have, uh, we may have uh, this kind of uh, term. Let me erase now this part here. Uh, so we may have uh, h6 phi dot phi double dot. OK? This seems bad because I have a phi double dot derivative, but now I have uh, this coupling here. And as you can see, I can do a very similar trick to what we, we did before. This is one, the, uh, one half of phi dot square. OK? Again, integration by parts. This gives minus 1 half h6 dot phi dot square. So this term is not harmful. If you have this term, we will have this term. It's not a problem. Why we will have this term? These terms will come, mm, mm, well, this one may, may come, but anyhow, so they will not be harmful. Uh, what I said here for, for phi is true for any other field. If I have alpha dot and alpha double dot, I will do exactly the same thing. Uh, let's see. So then I may have uh, a term like this. Sorry. OK. That's also another possibility. Now when I do this, then I do the following. So this, is, this will be minus phi dot h7 phi dot. Voila. Okay. Now, this one will be 
let's see, minus h7 dot phi phi dot minus h7 phi dot squared. Okay? So this term is fine. We don't change it anymore. This one we can still change according to the same rule we, we, we well, here. Okay, so this will be then one half h7 double dot phi square minus h7 phi dot square. Okay? OK, so then I will say that this kind of term gives a contribution in the kinetic term and in the mass term. OK? This term of contribution gives a contribution only to the mass term. Uh, let's say this one is just a kinetic term, and this one gives a contribution to the kinetic term or the field. Uh, yeah, but uh, another term which might be harmful would be how many h? Okay, h8, let's say, phi double dot say v dot. Because here, you see, if I take one derivative if I do derivative of parts, I will have a term which is kinetic, will be, let's say, minus phi dot. And then I have the derivatives of h, h naught times v dot. And then I will have h naught v double dot. So this term here is a kinetic term. When I say kinetic term, I mean that it's a term which multiplies dot dot. OK? But now, he, I, I, I have split the, the, the second derivative here. And I cannot do anything about it. OK? So, uh, eh? okay. so either, either, uh, either you know, I keep it over here, or I go over there. So this term is harmless only when the double dot is coupled with the same field, actually. If you couple to a different field, situation may be bad. It could be good if, if in the Lagrangian there is a term which is actually opposite to this one, and they cancel out. That's also a possibility. But if, some, if somehow it remains, it looks like there are some, some you will see what happens here. If you have a Lagrangian, if you have a Lagrangian which has this term here, this will be minus h8 phi dot v double dot. When I take my, this is a Lagrangian, right? So I can, I can find my Euler uh, Lagrange equations to this approximate, whatever, to this Lagrangian here. So you will see that when I do the variation with respect to v, which now is my field, this one is not a field anymore. This one may be fixed, because this is a background quantity. If I take the variation with respect to my Lagrangian v, this will give you two derivatives when I do integration by parts. And I will get that the equations of motion for v will contain phi triple dot. It looks like I have uh, some, oh, OK, no, no, so uh, it looks like I have higher derivative theories, OK? Same thing when, when, I didn't say, but same thing when, when I, as you, as you notice, I am not considering here derivative with respect to space. OK? The, the derivative with respect to space are much simpler, because whenever I have, say, alpha di di chi, uh, I should write maybe di di chi, you see, here I will have some function of time here. So the, 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 the partial derivative of uh, the, space, uh, the spatial derivative don't feel this time-dependent 
object. So this one is just you know, very simple to write down in terms of minus h then uh, di alpha di chi. But the reason why I also don't introduce this special derivatives much is because at the end of the day, we will introduce some Fourier decomposition. <coughs> and actually, I will do even more than that. I will keep only one Fourier mode. And the reason why I will keep only one Fourier mode is because the modes will decouple. So one Fourier mode, again, doesn't see all the other Fourier mode, which is a very different thing from what I said between tensor, vector, and scalars. This second part comes because the equations are linear. If I have, you see, a, a, a Lagrangian which is quadratic in the field, once you find the equations of motion, the equation of motion will be linear. If you have x dot square minus x square, the equations of motion you get from this Lagrangian are linear. Right? And once we have a, a linear uh, equations of motion, as in electromagnetism, we, we can, you know, we can take the, uh, we can take a, it's very useful in general to take a Fourier decomposition. And what's the usual, uh, useful for Fourier decomposition we can do? It's a Fourier decomposition in space because all these, all these coefficients are purely time dependent. Okay? So if I take, say, that my, my, my alpha is a sum over cosine of kx and blah, 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 then you will see that because my, time, uh, uh, my, my, my equations of motion will have coefficient which depends only on time, then this is the part that I only care about. But this part here will, will factorize, factorize out of the equations. So each mode will be completely independent of the other. Every k mode will be, every k mode will have a dynamics which is completely decoupled from any other one. This is true for scalars, this is true for vectors, and this is true for tensor. So this is extremely, this is another very good approximation because, for example, I can study only this very single mode. Wow, only that one, why? Eh, because this is a perfectly fine mode. By the way, so I am studying even along x only. Because since each mode decouples, the models that goes like this and the model uh, that goes like that are completely decoupled at the linear level. And it's not a, it's not, I am not losing any generality here. Because each mode completely decouples, so why don't I study only one of them? The information that I should get from one of them is completely general must be completely general because this mode completely doesn't feel any, any other mode. <coughs> of course, this is true in linear perturbation theory. If, it's, if we are not in linear perturbation theory, then I have to consider all the modes which can be coupled, coupling with me. In particular, a Fourier decomposition may not be very useful if you have a, a nonlinear uh, set of equations. But in linear case, the Fourier decomposition will be very, very usable. And we're using the code, because the code, you no, know, usually we have a very finite amount of memory in our code. Instead of dealing with the monster uh, expression, which is depending on x, y, z, we can actually study this thing over here. You say, OK, why, why not the sign? That's another possibility, which will be a different mode. What about the cosine 2 k? That's also fine. I mean, any mode that you, you can think of, any, any wave mode you can think of, is fine. I take this one for simplicity. It's simplicity by general. What happened? 
No, 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 no. So, no, 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 absolutely no. I mean, okay. oh. No, as long as the perturbation theory is trusted, we can do this. If perturbation theory breaks down, we could something like won't, then the whole thing changes. But as long as you still have small oscillations, each mode will completely decouple from the other. Okay, this is the different thing from the fact that tensor mode, scalar mode, and, and, tensor, uh, and scalar mode uh, decouple. That was symmetry. Here is also symmetry in the sense that the, the coefficient of my, of my differential equation are purely time dependent. So I, dec I can decompose in space. So to put I uh, om uh, omega t, it's not useful bec bec because the, your coefficient depends on time. But kx is fine. So uh, once, once we do this decomposition in kx, the, the derivative then, the, the partial derivative, will get only k. All right. Okay. Yes, so I want to discuss. Okay, yes. Now, let me suppose, uh, let me suppose that I erase maybe this part. So notice that the whole thing now is try to simplify as much as possible the expression of L2 using all the, possi also all the possible tricks we have without losing generality, OK? Without making oversimplifications. We try to, we try to simplify, but those simplifications must, uh, must not spoil uh, the generality. So uh, now, a another term that we may have uh, is alpha dot chi. I forgot how many h we wrote. OK, let's say h11. OK, alpha dot chi. Now this one, remember when I had alpha dot and alpha, this I could make uh, a time integration by parts, and that term was giving me uh, some contribution in the mass term. Remember, right? Now, this one, what is this? Well, this one, uh, if we have this term, actually, maybe let me call it, <laughs> let me call it 1, 2, OK, for reasons that you will see in a moment. Uh, if we have this term, most probably in the action, we will also have a, a term like this one. OK? Notice that this one may, this one may be different from that one. Eh? These two coefficients of time may be completely different. One can be 0, the other one cannot be. Both can be 0, whatever. But in general, we will have. Now, what we can do here, you see what we can do here? We can do the following. <laughs> Let me see. This one, I do something very simple now. I put 1 half alpha dot chi plus. So I, I split this one into two equal terms, 1 half. OK? I should write 1 half plus 1 half. But the second term, I do integration by parts in alpha. So I, I will have minus 1 half alpha times h12 chi dot. OK? It's the same term, but I do in integration by parts. And I neglect the total derivative. Total derivative is always neglect. Because in Lagrange, I can neglect it. Plus 1 half h21 alpha chi dot 
And then I will have a minus 1 half chi H21 alpha dot. OK? Hopefully, I didn't do many mistakes. OK, so then we will have 1 half H12 alpha chi minus 1 half H12 dot alpha chi minus 1 half H12 alpha chi dot plus 1 half H21 alpha chi dot minus 1 half H21 dot alpha chi minus 1 half h21 chi alpha dot. OK? All right, so then this part here can be written in terms of, uh, you see I have uh, two terms in alpha chi. So this is minus 1 half h12 dot plus h21 dot alpha chi. And then let me consider all the terms uh, that alpha dot chi. Uh, OK, just a sec. Yes, one? This one, eh? Now, as you can see, this one comes as plus 1 half h12 minus h21 alpha dot chi. Then let's see what happens to the other term. That this one will be this one and this one. You see, it's the same, but up to a minus sign. So this will be minus alpha chi dot. OK? All right? Then I will stop changing this term. What happens now in this case? This term here gives me contribution to the mass because they, are, they, they don't have derivatives, both fields. This term does not give me contribution to the, to the kinetic term because this is a mixed term. But you notice that in terms of the matrix Q dot Q, this becomes an anti-symmetric matrix because this term is opposite sign with respect to this one. Okay, so if I build up a matrix with Q, Q dot, this will go to an, uh, this matrix for this kind of case will become anti-symmetric. What up? This one. Any term, any term which is so this is in classical mechanics. This will be potential for my fields because it's a quadratic. It's a mass term. The most general mass term you may think for fields will be m1 square chi 1 square plus 1 2 m, one, uh, m 2 square uh, chi 2 square plus, plus m 1 2 uh, chi 1 chi 2. OK, so this is exactly when we have uh, like a springs, you know, the force of a spring, the potential for the springs, which with 1 half, uh, it doesn't need to be diagonal we will have uh, non-diagonal terms. But it's still coming from the potential for your springs, which is mass term, actually, in fields, in field theory, actually. Uh, that depends on the sign of these objects here, and blah, blah, blah. Then discussing the sign of the mass is also interesting. That when we will do, when we discuss uh, stability, so far, what I'm saying is that uh, what, what, what I would like to do is the following. 
I will try as much as possible to write down the Lagrangian in second order in the, in the following form. I will have Aij Qi dot Qj dot sum over i, sum over j. And this one I can do it unless, as I said, unless I have phi double dot square. Or I, unless I have alpha phi double dot. If I have these terms, oops, I cannot do. I have to introduce another matrix. But if I don't have these kind of terms, that's the object that I can build here. Then I will write dij qiqj dot, which is this kind of object here. And then I will have minus cij qiqj. That's the whole thing that, that what I want to write. That is what I want to write. OK? That will be the final goal, or intermediate even goal, OK? To try to, to take my Lagrangian and write it as much as possible in this form. OK? Notice one thing, that uh, uh, this I will call mass matrix. This will be kinetic matrix. And this I will call it, how do I call it? I never call it. See, I mean, OK, let's call it mixed. Actually, this one, uh, I, I want to I wanna actually talk a, a little bit. If I had, ten, if I had time, well, I will have. So, uh, I, OK, I will say something about this kind of term. OK, I will say something about this kind of term, actually. Uh, yeah, oh, but, but, but notice, suppose we already know what happens if we have a, the diagonal term, when i is equal to j. When i equal to j, we will have something like b11, q1, q1 dot. But we know that this one can be integrated by parts and gives a mass term. So Bij becomes completely antisymmetric. All the diagonal terms are 0. And the non-diagonal non term can be written in antisymmetric part. OK, so this will be symmetric because Qi, Qj will, is symmetric. So this will be purely symmetric, antisymmetric, symmetric. So we begin to see structure, OK? Into this mess, blah, 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 blah. We, we try now to, to write down in a uh, ordered way. I should tell my wife, sometimes I put order in my things, at least in the Lagrange, actually. Because usually in my, my office, in my house, I don't do anything. <laughs> OK, so now, uh, so this is one, one, um, one thing that I wanted to say. Yeah, OK, so what's the meaning? OK, so this is tendentially clear. Now, this is like the real, uh, you know, when we have in classical, uh, classical mechanics, this will be really the, the kinetic part. Now, this will be the mass part, actually. To be honest uh, with you, this mass part will be splitted later on into two parts. Uh, because uh, notice that when, when, we, when we, we will do this Fourier decomposition, all these elements will become, in general, a function of t and k. t and k. Actually, t and k square, I should say. Because we, we will not have a di chi only in the Lagrange. We will have maybe di alpha di k, but this will give you k square terms. 
So k, k always comes with square in this Lagrange. So this will be function of t and k square, function of t k square, function of t and, t and k square. So then we can maybe split, possibly, the terms in k square and the terms in not k square. We can further do this split in terms of how they depend, how do, how they depend on k square. Okay. Okay. Sometimes the split is not easy to do. Now I want to discuss what's the meaning of this term here, because the other two terms may be are familiar, at least. Notice that this may not be diagonal. Uh, this, this can always be said to be anti-symmetric, very easily, by integration by parts. And this will not be diagonal in general. It will be symmetric, but not diagonal. Now, we know that the symmetric matrices can be diagonalized. OK? That's something that we had to do. Yes, so maybe I'm going slow, but I, I want to make sure that all things uh, come up slowly. So now. Uh, so how do, I do, how do I deal with the terms here? Then the first thing to do is start to integrate them by parts. Try to get as much as possible the Lagrangian in the form that I, I wrote there. Okay? Once we, we get to, the, to that form there, we are in a very good shape. No. Uh, in most of the theories, actually, we stop when we, when we write the, ver the final version in into this form, because we, we will be able to, to give some stability condition. It's like uh, when we have, uh, when we have in this uh, in springs problems here, uh, we had to find the eigenfrequencies of the modes, right? So that's more or less the end of, 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 of the problem in classical physics. We'll do something very similar to that. Of course, in general, uh, for example, if I want if I want to know if I want to know, for example, how structure forms, then I, I need to solve the, the differential equation. Mm -hmm. But that that will do we will do it numerically. Apart from very special cases where we can we can solve it analytically, but that's maybe I know only know maybe one case maybe. Okay, so I want to discuss uh, this uh, anti-symmetric B term actually, and let me let me actually uh, say that this one we actually we have seen it maybe we have not seen it but maybe we should have seen it in in when we did uh, uh, electromagnetism. Uh, this kind of force comes, so if, if, we have, uh, uh, if we have a magnetic field which is along Z constant, uh, in, in, the, in the Z direction, okay, and we have a charged particle, then the force, uh, the force is, is given by, by this, no? Now, in classical mechanics, we, we would write that the Lagrangian becomes, if I, if I consider the Lagrangian, if I, if I consider only a particle which moves in the xy plane, not in the z plane, then this will be the kinetic term, and we will get minus q b z x y dot minus y x dot. So this is the Lagrangian which describes the motion of the particle in this constant magnetic field. And we get exactly that kind of form there. 
we get the DB, DB matrix. So sometimes I, call, I myself call that matrix the magnetic matrix. Because just reminds me of that thing. And it also has, a, we know the magnetic force doesn't make any work, right? Because that's, that is perpendicular to the velocity. If I do dot V, I get zero. So the magnetic force doesn't give any contribution to the Hamiltonian. So here, when we write the Hamiltonian of this Lagrangian, the term should disappear. OK? So that's exactly what happens there, actually. So that's why I call it this, this kind of thing. But of course, this, this, this doesn't mean that this one doesn't count anything, and I can't neglect it, actually. That's not true at all, actually. The thing that when I write the, the Hamiltonian there is, you know, you will have uh, this BZ coming through uh, in the momentum, in the definition of the momentum, actually. So it's not, we, we, it's not that we can, we can throw it out. Absolutely no, actually. Okay? But say, when, when, we, when we, we will write down the, uh, the final Lagrangian in, in the... Uh, we may want to make it um, um, antisymmetric so that this part here, we will get all the contribution we want to discuss the mass matrix. Okay. All right. Uh, another thing that I want to say. Yes. Now, I wrote this, uh, now QI, Q, QI, when I wrote to QI, I meant all the possible um, perturbation fields. Alpha, chi, phi, whatever, everything. Okay? Notice that uh, it may be possible that the determinant of Aij is zero. That's a possibility. Why is it a possibility? So this means, uh, see, you see, this must be all in function of t and q and t and k square, right? At most. So this means that Aij will be something. Uh, sorry, yes, dl l2 means this, uh, the quadratic Lagrangian dqi dot dqj dot. OK, that's, we don't have any other possibility because the Lagrangian is quadratic. Uh, uh, but, uh, suppose that in L2, L2, alpha square comes in this kind of term. Alpha, sorry, alpha comes, uh, the field alpha comes in this way. There are no time derivatives. So it's clear that this, this matrix here will have a zero determinant. Because for Q, when QI is equal to alpha, we will have zero, 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 zero. Right? For that matrix. So that matrix may have zero determinant. When we have that, that matrix is zero determinant, we have, in your Lagrangian, there are some Lagrange multipliers. which means the Lagrangian has constraints. Okay? When, we stu when we study analytical mechanics, Lagrangian dynamics, whatever, it's not so common that we, we study constraints. Okay? It's not so common. There maybe there is a chapter in the book, but usually uh, myself, as I was a student, maybe I think I... I I didn't, you know, the, my teacher didn't introduce it. I understand, it's a bit like, uh, but in this case, it's actually, we will have constraints a lot. So what I want to do now is to start understanding these constraints and how to deal with them. Once we study the constraints, we will help, we will, un we will know, we will understand how to deal 
with red the reduction of the degrees of freedom. So at the end of the day, what we want to do, the final goal of, of cosmological perturbation theory is the following. Remove all the possible Lagrange multipliers until we found a minimum number m such that k i j, where now i and j goes from 1 to m, the determinant of k i j, which is now the, the, the new kinetic matrix, after removing all these Lagrangian, uh, this will be different from 0. OK? So the goal is the following. OK, so this, we will start with the determinant of a i j, which is 0. OK, this means I have constraints. I have Lagrangian multipliers. Then the goal is to remove all the Lagrangian multipliers until I have a kinetic matrix which has non-zero determinant. Once we arrive at that, uh, at that stage, we will say that <coughs> in the scalar sector, I have uh, m independent degrees of freedom. OK? Scalar, usually in this uh, scalar, scalar because we are studying scalars, scalar degrees of freedom. OK. Uh, I had to mention here that sometimes people, uh, it was some friends also, uh, when, when I say independent scalar degrees of freedom, I mean in, independent number of fields okay, that I have in my Lagrangian. Some people define the degrees of freedom by initial condition we had to give to the system. Because this is a quadratic action, then we will have 2m initial condition, right? Because each equation will give a second, second order differential equation. So if I have m fields, I will have 2m initial conditions. OK? So some people name the degrees of freedom by the initial condition the system needs. That would be 2m. Personally, I tendentially say, what are the minimum number of fields, scalar fields, I need to use to describe my scalar action? OK. So we had to, uh, we had to learn how to use this, these constraints. The, the theory of a constraint system is developed a lot, actually, although as I said, we, we don't usually see much, actually. And especially, the, uh, it's uh, both at the Lagrangian level and at Hamiltonian level, actually. Hamiltonian level is also very useful. It will be a, a, a course by itself, actually, because it's complicated. It's, uh, so now we will, co we will see constraints in the Lagrangian. Uh, at the Lagrangian uh, level, OK? In, uh, the good point of the Lagrangian, the Lagrangian is much simpler when we, we deal with the constraints with respect to the Hamiltonian, actually. OK. We, we can diagonalize. We can diagonalize. When I say we can diagonalize, ah, 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 OK. So, OK, hopefully, maybe I will show you also an example of this diagonalization. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> when we diagonalize, what, what, what we have to do? Uh, we ha in general, we have to do, in this Lagrangian, we have to do a field redefinition. OK, in, in general, we have to write uh, Q, QI is equal to whatever. I'm uh, sorry. Um, maybe D, DIJ, QJ. Where these again are background quantities and these are perturbation variables. So we had to make a field definition. Okay? 
we cannot expect that integration by parts will make it uh, impossible. After, by doing integration by parts, we, we bring it into this, into this form. Sometimes it may be diagonal, sometimes no. Actually, most of the times, no. Okay, then if we want to diagonalize the system, then we have to do a theory definition. Exactly, for example. So you mean like eigenvalues uh, and, this kind of, and this kind of thing. Yeah, that's one way, but they usually don't follow that way. Okay, again, because one has to see uh, what's the simplest way to, 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 to diagonalize. So that's why I want, maybe I hope to show you. So let me give you a, ve a, 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 a very, uh, um, let me give you an example of uh, reduction of degrees of freedom for a very simple Lagrangian. You will say, why do, we, why do you discuss these simple cases? Because these simple cases will actually, <laughs> most, most of the times, uh, happen in real calculations, actually. So actually, this example here, we will see actually to be, to be true even in, in the maple code we are going to see later on. So the Lagrange I want to discuss here is the following. Of course, any, any, any example that I give you will, will be a quadratic Lagrangian because we are discussing with quadratic Lagrangians, okay? So let me give you this example here. x dot y minus y dot x minus b divided by 2 x squared. Okay? Now, I gave you this example here. Notice that uh, I even forget the fact that b depends on t and k, okay? For the moment, this is really example, toy model example. Now, what is this thing? This is a bit weird object here, no? because there is no kinetic term for this object. There are two fields which couple with each other. Okay? They couple with each other, and uh, they couple with each other, uh, and uh, the kinetic term completely is zero. We have, we have the anti-symmetric part, B, and we have the mass term, this one. Kij is completely zero. Of course, it's the determinant is zero. Okay? The whole kinetic matrix, two times two kinetic matrix, is zero. Bij is, no, uh, is non zero. And the mass matrix has one only element, is diagonal, but only one element not equal to zero. So it's, a it's already in the what I would call canonical form, because we diagonalized, the B is antisymmetric, and C is also diagonal. We are very lucky. But it sounds absurd, this object here, because it has no kinetic term. This is only x squared, no, not x squared, last term? Yes. Uh, no, no, this is x squared. Oh, Purely mass term, this one. OK? Now, let's, fi uh, let's find the uh, equations of motion. The equations of motion are the following, d over dt, dl over dx dot is equal to dl over dx, d over dt, dl over dy dot is equal to dl over dy. OK, so this is the uh, Euler-Lagrange equation, which are always valid. Given a Lagrangian, boom, this, this is the equation. OK? All right, so this, this will mean uh, I take the derivative with respect to this. I will get y dot uh, is equal to minus y dot. Let me see, y dot, I think, d over dx minus y dot minus b x squared, uh, x. So if I do a trivial mistake, please say it to me, <laughs> OK? And then this other equation will tell you minus x dot uh, equal to 0. Do you agree? x dot here. So they have to do d over dy. Ah, sorry, you're right. 
equal to uh, x dot. You're right. You're right. Plus. Plus. Good. Much better than what I, much better than my calculation. That's great. Now, is it the, the, uh, minus x dot is equal to x dot. Right. So this means that x dot is equal to zero. What I wrote from the beginning was just the solution because I already knew. Okay, I already knew what was the solution. I wrote just the solution. Okay, all right. Aurel Lagrange will not be happy about it, but that was the solution, okay? So x dot is equal to zero is the solution, okay? Now from this one we get that, uh, let's say, uh, that y dot is equal to minus b, b divided by two by x. So we can, x is constant, we can integrate, uh, we can integrate this one, we will get uh, y zero minus b half x t. Okay? Good? Now you notice that there are two initial conditions x0, y0. Hmm? That seems a good thing. Notice that. Uh, uh, Okay, so now this is, this is the starting point. And then I write my Lagrangian in this form. Minus 2y dot x minus b square s square. So what I did here, I integrated by parts this term. Okay, and I get that one. I can do that. I destroy, my, I destroy my picture of this anti-symmetric matrix, but I can do that. But now x has become a Lagrange multiplier. First kind, OK? Because it comes non-linearly. And we know every first kind of Lagrange multiplier can be integrated out using its own equation of motion. So now, for this Lagrangian, if I, uh, now, uh, the Euler equation just becomes this. For Lagrangian multiplier, just the partial derivative equal to zero. That's the Lagrangian equation. Okay? And now, this one uh, will, will, will give you minus 2y minus bx equal to zero. Okay? Why not? Good. Minus 2y dot, okay, I had to slow down, okay. Minus 2y minus bx equal to 0, okay? Good. Now, uh, as I said, any first, any first order Lagrange, any Lagrange, any Lagrange multiplier of the first kind can be integrated out, yes, because this one is an algebraic equation for x. So x uh, becomes minus 2 divided by b y dot. And then I put it back in the Lagrange. OK, that's the fundamental step. So L will be minus 2 y dot x, which is minus 2 divided by b y dot, minus b divided by 2 x squared, which is 4 divided by b squared y dot squared. OK? All right? Now, you can see that what happens here, this I will get the plus 4. This I get 2, minus 2. So I will get 2. So this, this 1b simplified. 2 divided by b, y dot square. OK? Wow, we have a kinetic matrix. And it's very simple. So now y becomes a free field, because this is purely kinetic term. Its equation of motion have a solution, this one. Initial speed, initial position. 
right? The equation of motion for that one is just y double dot equal to zero. And the general solution is constant plus v times t. And v is constant. That's it. This is the, the effective speed. So they have the same equations of motion. They have the same solutions. If they don't, we do mistake. OK? OK, so now, uh, but uh, this one will tell you that now, you see that this one will tell you that this x is just uh, proportional to the velocity. That's exactly what we found here. This was the velocity to the velocity. So the, the Lagrangian, on, on if once we replace a Lagrange multiplier of the first kind, has the same solutions of the original Lagrangian. So we are not screwing up the system. But effectively, we got rid of the x. Now x doesn't exist anymore in my, in my reduced uh, Lagrange. So before I had two fields, now I have one. So now determinant of the ID is not zero. What happened? Determinant of the ID. Of course, now, now we have one field. <laughs> and, and now we have one field. And now uh, we have only one kinetic. We, it's not even a matrix, this object here. So the matrix degenerates into a number. Notice one. Now this is the first time we see a ghost. This is a kinetic term, right? So it must be positive. B must be positive. Boom, we saw, we saw the first time that something that we wouldn't see too much from here, except maybe you may say, ah, I want the mass to be, to be, to be positive. I mean, minus m squared. No? Yeah, but the, the system here was, was we don't know. We didn't, this was not just kinetic term minus ma mass times x squared. This was not the standard spring construction of the Lagrangian, where we knew that m should be positive, actually. But now we saw that the, actually this b has <laughs> must be positive. So I thought I didn't want to do introduce now, but I think I had to talk about ghost now. To be honest with you, I thought I would speak about ghost later on. OK, maybe we stop here for the moment. But this already tries to, to answer your question. We have Lagrangian multipliers. Let's use it and, re and reduce the degrees of freedom. Unless, until, sorry, until we have, for the new Lagrangian, a kinetic matrix with non-zero determinant. And then I will say that this, de uh, this Lagrangian has one scalar degrees of freedom. So which means two initial conditions, which is exactly what we found from using the, the original Lagrangian. So the whole thing must be consistent. If it's not, we are making some mistakes somewhere. OK, maybe we, uh, we see in 15 minutes. OK, we meet in 15 minutes.